And now that I had you set, I'm going to have you stand together. Okay? Um, before we do that, let's, let's uh, come before the Lord in prayer for the message of this morning's hour. Our Heavenly Father, again, we just come before you, lifting you up and praising you. And Lord God, as we look into your word this morning, we do pray your blessings to be upon it. Lord, I pray and ask that you speak through me to the, to the church today, for those ears that are receptive to your word. We pray and ask, Lord, that you open their hearts, that, that the message, Lord, doesn't come from me, but it comes from you. It just comes from you, Lord God. Put me behind, put me in the back, Lord God, and speak through me and to the hearts that it be your word spoken and not mine this morning. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I've, uh, well, I've been at the church here for just a little bit less than two years, uh, but I've been preaching, I guess, behind the pulpit just as like Paul Fasella has done when he was here a couple weeks ago. I'm glad you guys didn't, did he leave anything for me, by the way? <laughs> no, good. Uh, you know, doing like what Paul did, I did that for several years. But in all the years uh, of speaking, I've never spoke on the 23rd Psalm. Minus um, a couple of funerals that, I, that I've done. Uh, but never actually behind a pulpit to actually deliver a message on the 23rd Psalm. And I just always kind of put that back a little bit and just, just never, never got there with it. But, uh, you know, circumstances happen, life happens, things happen. And uh, I, I think, you know, uh, based on what's happened in my life over the last several weeks, it's time. It's time. And so at this time, what I would like for everyone to do is we bring it up on the board. I'd like for everyone to stand, and we're actually going to read it together, okay? We will read it together, the 23rd Psalm. Let's begin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. I know for the for the twenty third Psalm, it can have a lot of meaning for a lot of people and what it can actually bring to you. It can bring to you comfort in a time of suffering when you're going through struggles and heartaches and disappointments. But it's also a psalm that can give you strength. And, 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 and to give you the boldness and the courage that you need to, to do certain things. Over the last several weeks uh, in, uh, in, with the family and face dad and all, uh, I knew that I was going to have to do his funeral. And my relationship with him is probably like um, uh, Naomi and Ruth in the Bible, that kind of a relationship. Maybe like a David and a Jonathan. That's the relationship he and I had. He, uh, we would spend hours, hours, literally hours at the dining room table, just with the book open, you know, and studying Scripture. And that's the kind of relationship he and I had. And so I knew I was about to do his funeral, and I, was, I, I knew. I was going to struggle uh, since the day, you know, when, since he passed. Um, you know, every time I thought about it to the time of the funeral, I'd just, I'd, I'd weep, I'd cry because of that closeness. And people were praying for me that God would give me the strength that I needed to be able to do 
what he wanted me to do. And he did. And I can't thank you guys enough for those prayers. I can't thank you enough. That is the only thing that got me through it. But the prayers coming from godly people. So I praise God for that, and I thank you for those prayers. And when I look at the 23rd Psalm, I've always looked at it as a psalm of comfort. But it's also a psalm that gives us strength and courage to do what God wants us to do. You know, there's a key verse in that psalm. And it's, it's, it's verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, the valley of the shadow of death is a literal, actual place. So if you can envision David when he was writing this, and in the country that he lived in, there was actually a place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death that he would oftentimes, I would think, have to walk through with his sheep, being that he was a shepherd and had these little, these little sheep that he tended. He actually had to walk through this valley called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And I, and I try to relate this a little bit, thinking of where we're at in our lives today, perhaps Perhaps, you know, going back to the Old West time with all the outlaws, you know, they had the Badlands. And in the Badlands, they had the mountains where, where all the gangs would hold up. And you dared not go to that area because you would probably not come out. I often think that perhaps, you know, in our 21st century, there are certain places in Baltimore that you don't want to go into. There are certain places in New York City that you don't want to go into, in Washington, D.C., and... I could, you know, we can name every city, Atlanta and Los Angeles and San Francisco, it doesn't matter. The major cities in Pittsburgh, the major cities has areas you don't want to go into because you risk your life going into those areas. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. David is talking here, when you look probably up into your Bible, and you look at that 23rd Psalm, it talks about him being the good shepherd. And David is making reference, when he says, Lord, he's talking about God. He's talking about Jesus Christ. And in the 10th uh, chapter of the book of John, Jesus tells the people, he says, I am the good shepherd. And my sheep know me, and I know my sheep. They hear my voice. They respond to my voice. That is who he is. In, in, in the 23rd Psalm, it starts off, he says, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't have any needs. God supplies all the needs that I have. He gives me the strength and the courage. He gives me my provisions for the day. He takes care of all aspects of my life. All aspects of it. All aspects. Sheep need a shepherd. Jesus Christ being the good shepherd. It says in verse 2, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Starting in verse 3, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. We all need that good shepherd to lead us in life's journeys. We need to give our full trust and confidence in him. We need to believe that he will lead us in the directions and the paths that we need to go into. All for his glory, all for his name's sake. It says in the scripture that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He says that in, in, in the book of Hebrews and refers back to Deuteronomy. That he will never leave us nor forsake us. He'll never turn his back on you. You are called his children. He loves us. He loves you. No matter what difficulties or challenges that we're going through on a daily basis, it could be the loss of a loved one. It could be a family situation that you're going through right now. 
It could be things with your spouse, or maybe with your children, or maybe with your parents. Or it could be a, a job situation or a financial situation that you're going through. He'll be with you. He will lead you in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, because he is God. But looking what I went through over the last couple of weeks, and, I, and looking at verse 4, walking through that valley of the shadow of death, those difficult times in life, the challenges that I had, I think that God gives us the strength to do what we need to do. He gives us the boldness to do what we need to do. He, he makes us fearless so that we can do those things that he has called us to do. With, uh, with, with, with Ann's father on Sunday morning last week at 11 o'clock, I couldn't have done it. But by 2 o'clock, God equipped me. Again, because of your prayers. Because of your prayers. When we look at boldness that God gives to us, I think, I think of the time back in, in, in Acts chapter 4. If you remember Peter and John, they were locked into prison. And they were released from prison. And they, they and the disciples all gathered together in the upper room, in a room together. And what did they do? They prayed for boldness. That they would have the boldness that they could go out and preach the word. They were going through such persecutions because of the word of God. That God gave them the boldness that they needed to do the job that God called them to do. When the people heard Peter and John speak, they said that they spoke with boldness because they were just ordinary men. And people were stunned and shocked by the boldness that they had. That fourth verse, that fourth verse, I believe, enables us to stand on Jesus Christ and be a fearless people. Not only do we have the boldness to do what God wants us to do, but he'll make us fearless. Because he says, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. What does it mean to fear? Has anybody here ever been afraid before? Yeah? You're, you're willing to admit it. We've all had fears. We've all had fears. Let me ask you a question this morning. Just, and, and you can yell out an answer as we think about it here. Does anyone here have a favorite Bible story? Just, just give me the title, because we all have titles in Bible stories. You know, does anybody have a favorite Bible story? Esther. Oh, I'm sorry, I heard somebody. Esther. Esther, okay, the story of Esther. Okay, Queen Esther. Okay, how she was able to rescue her people. Okay. Her, her people from, uh, from, uh, from, from annihilation. Give me another one. The Christmas story. The Christmas story. Okay, okay, the Christmas story. Certainly how, how the angel appeared to Mary and Elizabeth, you know, to, to Joseph, and how they went to Bethlehem, the Christmas story. Give me another one. This is class participation. Daniel and the lion's den. Daniel and the lion's den. I love Daniel and the lion's den, you know. And we can see the picture, right? Can you picture Daniel in the lion's den? I mean, we've all seen the pictures where Daniel's down in that lion's den, perhaps, and along the rocks, there's a whole bunch of lions there, and Daniel may be sleeping and resting you know, himself on a lion. David and Goliath. Okay, you got to love the story about David and Goliath, right? David with the slingshot. And how, you know, I mean, David and Goliath is, is one of the stories we hear all the time when we're growing up in the church, isn't it? Yeah. I love Easter because of the resurrection. Easter, okay, how Jesus Christ went to the cross for our sins. Okay, he was three days in the tomb and he rose again. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? The, th the three servants of God who were thrown into the fiery furnace, okay? And, and they said, and they, there was a fourth man down there, it says, walking around with them while they And they came out. The king brought them back out, and not a hair was singed, no smell of smoke on their clothes. Who else has a Bible story? Which one? The Exodus. The Exodus, okay. How Jesus, or how, or how God rather rescued the people out of the land of Egypt, okay? They get to the Red Sea, right? And how God parted the Red Sea. And all the Hebrew children crossed the Red Sea. And then the waters closed in on all the Egyptians and wiped them all out, right? Not an Egyptian left. Give me another one. The creation, okay, how in seven days God created all that was created. Give me another one. You guys are getting good now. Okay. King Saul. King Saul. Okay, Okay. King Saul and how David was able to survive all that King Saul was trying to do to him. Okay. Who? Noah's Ark. You like Noah's Ark story, okay, where, where all the animals went into the, into the ark, right, two by two, and... And, and you see the pictures, the nice pictures of the, uh, you know, uh, parents will put those up on their wall, won't they? The pictures of the ark, and you see all these giraffes with their heads sticking up through the window and things like that. Uh, what about all the people, the millions and millions of people who drowned? Nah, just the Noah's ark. Okay. Okay. Any others? Jonah and the whale. Okay. How the fish swallowed Jonah. Okay, he didn't want to go to he didn't want to go to Nineveh, did he? All right, any others? Those are all good ones. Those are all good ones. <coughs> you know what's really interesting about those stories is when we look at the individual players in the story. We look at somebody like Jonah. We look at Noah. We look at Adam and Eve. Uh, we outside of Jesus, you know, with the resurrection. But all these people were just ordinary people, just like you and me. They weren't some special super person. They were just ordinary people that God used to do something extraordinary. People like Moses, who did not want to go back to Egypt, said Aaron, said someone else, don't send me. But he was just an ordinary person. In the book of James, chapter 5, the very tail end of the book of James, James mentions a man named Elijah. And Elijah is the man who was before the prophets of Baal. And he called down fire from heaven and, and it burned up the altars, of, 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 you know, as God said. And it was Elijah who slew all the prophets of Baal. He called down uh, fire, but then he also at one time said no rain. And it didn't rain and rain and rain. But you know what it says about Elijah in the book of James? It says that he was just an ordinary man, just like you and me. He was just an ordinary person who God used to do the extraordinary and this man named Elijah, after he slew all these prophets of Baal, he receives a message from, 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 uh, from Jezebel that says, by this time tomorrow, you will be dead. And this man, Elijah, all of a sudden had fear. And he ran. And he went into hiding. He says, Lord, just take my life now. But he had fear. But he was a man just like you and I. A man called to do something extraordinary. A person who God called upon, like a Queen Esther. Perhaps you were born for a day just as today. For God to use. But God has the power, the abilities to make us fearless. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So you picture that shepherd. He has his staff, and he uses that staff to rescue his sheep when they fall into a pit or to give them some guidance along the way. But he also has this thing called a rod, which is just really an extension of his hand. It was like a club that this shepherd would ward off 
the wolves and the bears and, and the enemy who may come in to try to take the sheep or to destroy his sheep. No matter what circumstance or situation you're going through, God is there with you. He is, he is there to give you the strength that you need. In Ephesians, Paul, Paul, the man, great man of God, who again, just like you and I, but God used him. Just an ordinary man. In the sixth chapter of Ephesians, Paul wrote this. He says to the, to the people of Ephesians, he says, Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will be fearless, making known the mystery, making known the mystery of the gospel. Paul prayed and asked the church to make him fearless, to give him the strength that he needed. So that when he walked through the valley, he knew that the good shepherd was with him. In the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, Barnabas, is what it says, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul, who was Paul, on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. Whom shall I fear? Who is it that you're afraid of? Or what is it that you're afraid of this morning? The valley of the shadow of death that you may be walking through. The difficulties you are going through. Jesus is right by your side to take you through that valley. He is there to protect you. He is there to comfort you. He is there to give you directions. He will take care of your enemies for you. Do you trust in him to do that? Do you trust in him? Interesting about this apostle Paul. He asked the people to pray for him that he would be fearless. But yet that he went out and spoke fearlessly. But then we read in Corinthians, he tells the Corinthian church, he says, he said, I came to you in weakness and with great fear, trembling, he said. See, Paul was just a man, just like we are. There's times that I am totally fearless. And yes, there are times that I am fearful. But you know what takes care of all the fears that we have? Love. Love takes care of all the fears that we may have. In 1 John 4, verse 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Think of the scripture. Think of Corinthians, the love chapter in Corinthians. Where perfect love casts out fear. See, the love that God has for you is a perfect love. And he can take all the fears that you have or all the worries or all the concerns that you have, the heartaches, the difficulties, the struggles, and he can cast those out. No matter who you, no matter who you are. No matter who you are. You'll take care of this for you. Because you're just a person, just like Noah, Jonah, David, Esther, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, Paul, John, Peter. God will equip you for whatever it is that you need. It says in verse 5 that he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He says you anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He prepares a place for you in the presence of your enemies. In other words, he's taking care of you. and He's actually, think, think of going through that valley. 
And you don't have any fears. So much so that he just prepares a table for you. All those who want to come against you. You have no fears. He blesses you. He pours blessings down upon you. All for his name's sake. All because he loves you. All so that you will give him glory and honor. All for that reason. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, it's uh, the 23rd Psalm. When you read that 23rd Psalm, how in verse 4 is a transition verse. The Lord, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. And though I walk in the though I walk through the valley. So what valley maybe are you walking through today? And tomorrow? Or maybe even the next day? What valley did you walk through yesterday? Or last week? Or last month? No? He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You just need to put your trust and hope and confidence in Him. You need to earnestly seek Him. When you're going through difficult times, sometimes it's hard to pray. Sometimes it's hard to find those words just to bring before God. What do you say when you're going through those difficult times? What do you say to the one who created everything? Sometimes you don't can't even find the words. The waters are rising, flooding in on you. The mountain's so high. Will I ever get back to that mountaintop experience again? What do you say to God when you're going through those? Sometimes the only thing you can say is just Jesus. That's all you need to say. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. Just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. He hears you. Let's go. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for the comfort that the 23rd Psalm gives. I thank you, Lord, for the boldness that it likewise gives and the fearlessness that it likewise gives, the hope that it gives. Knowing, Lord God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you'll always be there leading and guiding and giving us the directions in which to go. Lord God, to help us to put our full confidence in you. Help us, Lord God, to trust you, not with just a part of what we're going through, Lord God, but for everything that we're going through. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for hearing the prayers of your people. I thank you, Lord. May you receive glory and honor, Lord, in all that we do. We ask this in the name of Jesus.